Hey guys, it's Dan again, and today I would like to do something a little bit different. Today I'd like to show you guys how to set up a FlySky controller to PikaSim. Now, PikaSim is a free, um, is a free, uh, a free simulator, I should say. Uh, that beeping noise was the FlySky controller. Whenever it stays idle, it'll start to beep you, so don't mind that. Anyways. I'd like to show you guys how to set this up. This is what I use as a simulator. Um, I cannot figure out how to connect the Spectrum controller to it, and I don't believe there is a way. Well, I take that back. There, there probably is a way, but today we're going to focus on this FlySky controller. It's cheap. I got it for around $50, so in comparison to spending uh, between 100 to download something like Real Flight Simulator and than 200 for the controller and everything else. I think it's a fair deal. Okay, so to start out, um, you need to have your controller set. I'm going to start by turning it off, actually. And uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to have the controller in the lower right-hand corner of the screen so you can see everything that I'm doing on screen at the same time as what I'm doing with my fingers here on the controller. And so to start, PikaSim must configure itself to a controller. And in order to do that, what you have to do is you have to start with your controller off. And these FlySky controllers, they come with a connection for the back. This is a trainer port, I believe. This actually connects directly to a USB, uh, a USB plug-in that goes directly into my computer. So I have no need to go looking for an adapter or anything. This automatically comes with this, and it came with a transmitter. Now. Just a preface, I'm not sponsored by FlySky or any of them. This is just a video explaining how I do this. And if you want to do this, then this is the way I would go about it. So, not sponsored by them. Once again, this is just me explaining how I do this. So, I have this plugged into my USB port. I'm not going to demonstrate that because you guys know how to do that. So, you turn this on. It's going to beep a little bit. Then, I'm going to go to my PikaSim. Now, there's a couple of options that you have here. There's free fly and there's challenge. Your challenges are going to basically give you different challenges to do just as it says. Uh, I don't typically do this because chances are I'm not going to be doing any competition type stuff at the airfield. I'm just flying out there for fun, but you guys are welcome to do a challenge if you want to. I'm going to go to free fly because that's typically what I do. Now. The presets on here are going to be a powered trainer. I have my d my previous settings. That's the d the default or previous right there um, that you can see, and that will load up a previous plane that you've loaded before. But I'm going to start with a brand new one just to show you guys. So then it brings up the flying and it ex explains that. You, now you want to make sure that your controller is hooked up. So it should have already hooked up, and it looks like it has. So it seems like you you can see in on these spots here that the uh, uh, the actual throttle and the tail fin, or I should say the the rudder, are hooked up here, and that the ailerons are hooked up here and elevator here, and that everything's working. Before I even fly, I want to go to my settings. I'm going to go to joystick. So you want to make sure that your your uh, joystick is enabled and you want to make sure that adjust for circular stick movement is set on. And I kind of, I, I think that right now some of my previous settings are already saved on here. But yeah, that's basically how that works. So make sure that everything is mapped correctly. Make sure that you have your uh, roll stick mapped correctly. I mean, you can see whenever I move my ailerons, they go up, they go down. I could probably trim that, change the dead zone, but it'll at least work for what I'm trying to do. You can play around with those and make sure that these are each mapped to your stick. So, like, this one's a throttle stick. Right now it's at negative 99, which basically means it's off. Um, and then when I turn all the way up, Output is 1. So, or I should say it was 0.99, and the output is 1. When it's at 1, that it means it's completely on full throttle, 
when it's blasting. And then I don't think those are set to anything. Where's my rudder? In short, depending on depending on everything, you have to make sure that your controller is set up to where your sticks are actually moving there. Make sure to pay attention. Okay, there's the rudder. Wait. No, I'm sorry. That's the that's the throttle. Uh, basically, you have to make sure that each one of your sticks is hooked up to the computer correctly and make sure that they are registering with the model. And so once those are all set up, you can go back to your plane. And you can hook up smoke and other things to your model here. For this, I'm not going to demonstrate smoke just yet. I'm just going to go into the basics on flying this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start flying. And of course it takes off and, and this is this is a soccer field. I mean anyone who has flown before is probably going to start out on the soccer field, let's face it. Uh, I know I hear people say, oh, you need an AMA license and all that to fly in the AMA field. Yeah, you probably should get one, but if you're flying a little tiny plane, you'll be fine. So th there's different environments that you can simulate here. Uh, obviously, this is more like a trainer style plane. This looks kind of like a cadet trainer or maybe the trainer plane that I used to have when I was a kid. So here is, so yeah, I'm going to bring it back in for a landing really quick. Yeah. Eh. Landing was kind of out there. And of course you have to look out for the soccer net and everything. If you hit the soccer net and, and you hit any of these objects here, they will mess up your plane. I'm going to demonstrate, not that I would ever try to crash a plane, but I'm going to show you exactly what happens when you crash a plane in this game. Okay, so you see there it, sa it says damaged propeller and I think it was undercarriage. You can't quite see under the recording bar, but it'll tell you what you damaged with your plane, and then it will automatically reset your plane at the starting point. So, I'm going to hit pause here, and, I'm sorry, that was paused. Okay, I'm going to hit pause here, and I'm going to go back to my settings, and I can change my plane if I want to. So, th this is a good trainer. I, I usually fly on the trainer most of the time. This is the, the Jackdaw um, that that is the typical trainer model that you run into in this game. There's also like a like a F-18, uh, which I, I don't really like flying too much. And uh, there's like a Spitfire. The Spitfire is probably my favorite one. Um, this one, this plane is a lot of fun. And it actually flies pretty good, and it it sounds like a real Spitfire kind of. Oh, I'm sorry, my my landing gear was engaged. So make sure that your landing gear is not disengaged whenever you you're trying to take off there so uh, and and I, I can go over how to, how to do landing gear here in a second but for right now the easiest thing to do is just to start out flying with the landing gear you'll fly a lot slower and it'll be a lot easier for you so oh and I crashed again so and, and that's another thing about this is that if you really don't want to spend money tearing up a plane and then go through the I guess the heartbreak of just destroying your aircraft and then having to fix it all over again like in the good old days. Those days are gone. You can learn on a simulator and get the basics down. Not to worry about the the trouble of, oh, I just destroyed a $500 plane because no one wants to deal with that. So another thing you can change here is you can change your, is you can change your scenery. I typically like this flight land here. And uh, it'll, it'll change the wind speed. I'm going to have the wind speed off just for the purpose of this. I Usually when I'm training, I have my wind speed up. Um, maybe not quite that high, and I have some turbulence. Just because I want it to be as challenging as possible, so that way I'm prepared whenever I go out to the field. So I'm going to set up a runway. And this is the best way to do this. So I'm going to show you. Now there's a runway set up. And this runway here will give me sort of a baseline as to how I should, as to the course I should take whenever I'm trying to fly. So 
I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take off again. Because when you're at the AMA field, you're, most AMA fields require you to take off and land on the runway. Now, obviously, any landing you can walk away from is a good landing, but you really do want to be training to land on the runway. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this. And you see that takeoff was perfect. And I'm just going to do my circle. And for those of you who've been flying a few years, I mean, <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm sure you, you all know about how to do this already, but, um, you know, those of us who are brand new to flying, like, th this will give you the basics on how to do this. And it's not as accurate as Real Flight Simulator, but it will give you the experience of how to use your controller, what each of the controls do, just give you the general feel for it. It actually is pretty close. I wouldn't say it's the most accurate, but it, it's 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 pretty close to what you know you'll see at the field. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna land it again. This might be a bit rough. Oh, yep, and I bounced it. So the the Spitfire does land kind of quickly. It's a lot easier to land the Jackdaw uh, as opposed to that. So I'm able to do my my circuits or well. I like to call it the NASCAR track. So now I'm going to go to other controls. And I'm going to go down to the bottom. I'm going to show you about the landing gear. So uh, if I can find it, I think. I think it's in the. Oh, no, wait, it's in my options tab. That's what I'm trying to remember. Nope, not that. If I can find my landing gear. Can't seem to find it. Anyways, so the, so there is smoke here as well, and you and you can change your smoke as well. Um, I'm trying to find my landing gear. The the scrolling on this is really difficult, especially without a mouse. I would recommend using a mouse. Controller. Maybe it's in my joystick settings. Oh, okay. Viewpoint button, rates button. So I believe that my rates button, um, one of my rates buttons actually, um, is, is mapped to my landing gear. So that's the reason why you're seeing the rates there. But uh, you'll you'll get the feel for it. It's really easy, um, and when, once you get everything set, I mean, I have I currently have this switch set as my landing gear, so that way I can pull them in and I can go back, and I'm able to basically have this thing set. So that way, when I take off, I can flip up my landing gear, and then boom, I'm able to fly fast. I can do weird acrobatic stuff. I can do barrel rolls, I can do loops, I can do all sorts of crazy acrobatics now, and so, or aerobatics I should say, and uh, then I can bring them down again whenever I'm ready to land, and then my plane will start flying a little bit slower. Now, I don't know how accurate that is as to whether or not landing gear will make the plane fly that much slower. Typically there's landing flaps, but uh, once you get your landing gear set, and you get your aileron set, then you're pretty much good to go. I mean, you, you can practice with this all day. And it, there's other things as well on here. There's also... There's also 3D planes and your indoor flying planes. Um... This one is a lot of fun down here. I'm not really into the the 3D flying, but for those of you who are, you can also practice with that on here. 
and see, and yeah, I mean, these are stupid easy to fly. I mean, anyone could probably get into it. I don't know the rules of competitions. I know there there are competitions that get pretty crazy about these, but they are relatively easy to fly, even though I just crashed them. I'm just sort of playing around, but, but yeah, so... There's that. There's also a drone in here. There's several gliders. There's also um, control line planes. I know control line planes are kind of dying out, but that's also an option. Well, I'd also like to show you guys what happens when uh, you connect an Xbox One controller to this. I mean, the throttle is reversed. Uh, it's everything is inversed on this. It's very difficult to fly. I tried doing this beforehand, uh, before I actually got the Fly Sky controller, and it was just unmanageable. I mean, everything about this is just difficult, and um, you're not going to learn doing this because essentially, um, every like the the elevators reverse, the throttles reverse. I've tried inverting them again to try to make it work. It's just it doesn't work. So, it's kind of fun, but it's also, it's kind of gimmicky. I mean, like, they're, yeah, they're, if, if you've been using an actual RC transmitter, then you're not, you're not going to be able to do this at all. So there you have it. I mean, it's not a, it's, it's not as good as Real Flight Simulator or something that you're going to spend a hundred between a hundred and two hundred dollars for, or upwards of that. But it's a ch it's a good cheap option if you're trying to just spend fifty bucks, and then you have a controller that you can actually put into an aircraft, and it comes with a receiver as well. So if you get like a cheap trainer, then you can plug this in after you're done training with it on the simulator, and that's also a great option. So. That's all for today, guys. Um, don't forget, do not quit your day job. <laughs> and, oh, bump the camera. But, uh, yeah, see you guys next time.